This exclusive message from Expona is brought to you by Pure Audio Project. Welcome to our room at Axpona 2024. We are Pure Audio Projects. We provide open buffer speakers since 2013, modular open buffer speakers. And uh, this show is one of the largest and the most exciting shows that uh, we bring our products to in order to meet customers. We are selling direct only. So this uh, platform is our platform to meet customers, to allow them to listen to our speakers and uh, experience them. I mentioned the word modular and what is modularity in our speakers. We have three sizes of speakers, what we call a Duet 15, Trio 15 and Quintet 15. The Duet, Trio and Quintet stands for the number of buffers or number of uh, drivers that we are using. So here in front of us we have the Duet 15, the smallest one. It has one 15 inch woofer and one, we call it center driver, but it's mainly the main driver. And the, the same components are working in our Trio 15, meaning we can add a woofer and then you have two woofers and a center driver. And then we can add another two woofers and you have a Quintet 15, which is a relatively tall speaker with four 15 inch woofers and a center driver. So the components are the same components, except of, you know, crossover parts that has to be, have to be replaced when you're moving from one to another. But basically, you can start with a small speaker in a smaller room. If you move to a larger room, you can go to the Trio 15. If you have a really big or large room, you can use the Quintet 15. All of them use the same audio components and, it's, and even the same mechanical you know, form factors. The buffers are the same. The size of the frame is the same. That's the modularity in our speakers. And uh, in this specific model, in the Duet, we offer the different voxative drivers. While in the Trio and in the Quintet, we offer also coaxial driver that has a mid-range and a tweeter on the same axis, and we offer a horn driver. So they're also kind of swappable. You can swap between them, you can choose when you purchase. The crossover itself is, uh, is, uh, is built of a kind of motherboard with screw terminals on it, that you put the components on it and you just screw them to the, to the board. So when you are moving from a duet to a trio or you are choosing a different center driver, for example, you are moving from the voxative to a coax 10 or to a horn, which we also offer, you will need to swap few components on the crossover, which of course we guide you. But uh, after you get the speakers, if you want to experiment different capacitors, different resistors, that make a difference with the sonic signature, you can do it as well. You can buy any capacitor with the same value, plug it in and hear the difference between the different cups. And this is exciting because you might like more, you know, a laid back sound and other customer might like more sharp sound and the capacitors, they do the difference. Regarding baffles, you know, in open baffle, Differently from box speakers, there's not much pressure. There are resonances, there's a movement, but there's no pressure. And they are much more, much less sensitive to material than typical box speakers. So we are using materials more from an aesthetic, aesthetics point of view. Of course, they have to be rigid, they have to be, they have to fit the configuration, but it's not so critical as far as sound is concerned. In this case, you can see the bamboo, bamboo caramel finishing. These are three layers of bamboo going this way, basically, so it's very stable. We are using HDF and we are using German oak, which is a oak wood cut, a long, a kind of long piece of wood that is cut and you can see the grain running along the, the speaker. So these are the three materials we are working with. Yeah, well, behind me you see the Duet 15 and it has a, a set one 15 inch woofer and a main driver. Now, the main driver is a full range driver made by Voxative. And why are we using uh, full range drivers in general? It, there are few aspects that they offer that are not, that are kind of rarely found in audio 
market. We have one cone that is displaying the mid-range and the high frequencies, basically. So this single cone has one, sig one sonic signature. Now, if you have a mid-range and a tweeter, you have two different sonic signatures with a crossover between them. So if you imagine a piano playing from the middle sections to the higher section, you'll have a transition of a sonic signature once the tweeter becomes more dominant. So you have basically two sonic signatures that have to build the, the complete sound of a piano. In the case of full range drivers, you have one sonic sig signature along the entire frequency range. And when people turn on the speakers with the full range drivers and say, well, they sound uh, natural. There's a reason for, for the, them feeling this. Natural is because you have one sonic signature, no crossover in the critical listening session. So Voxative, they have few drivers that we are using in our configurations. This is uh, the one with the paper cone, uh, the one called AC 1.6. We are using another driver called PIFE that has a wood cone. And we offer also a field coil driver, which is a totally different story. I mean, field coil is a driver that is built differently, has a totally different presentation. It's more expensive as well. Well, here at Axpona, we also brought our new 3010 Heil AMT. Now, we were talking about the, the 15 inch based speakers. All our, the, the modular product line is basically based on our 15 inch woofers, Trio 15, Quintet 15, Duet 15. Um, and you need large drivers in order to, to create the feel of energy with open baffles. While in boxes, you can use smaller drivers and you have the pressure inside the box that gives you this feeling. But we wanted to challenge ourselves and to release a product that is small. And uh, therefore we, you can say design, we didn't really design it, but Morel helped us to modify one of their woofers to open buffle. And we launched uh, Trio 10, meaning Trio, two woofers and a main, dr main driver with 10 inch woofers. And uh, as a main driver, we took the Heil AMT. And Heil AMT is a legendary Twitter, and what is unique with it is because of its size and its technology, it plays the high frequency so effortlessly, and it can go very low into the mid-range as a tweeter. So basically, we have a wide-range tweeter, which is large, has a very strong magnet, playing anywhere from 600, I would say, even 500, to the top 20,000. And, you know, Heil AMT is a piece of history. I mean, many people know it and we meet people here coming. Oh, you know, I saw you last time I saw it. It was in the 70s, in the 60s. It's a beautiful Twitter. And we hope that this uh, smaller form 310 will suit smaller apartments. Not everybody have big, large rooms and many people live in condominiums. And it also will probably be suitable for European markets because in Europe people are they're not used to 15 inch drivers same way like the American you know fans are used to. European speakers are many times smaller and they, are, they live in smaller houses, smaller rooms. So that's that's the direction of the trio then. Yeah, well, regarding the woofers for open baffle, you know, uh, many people and many DIYers, they feel rightly that it's very easy to deal with open baffle. You take a board, you put two woofers and a full range driver or a Twitter and the crossover and you can hear music. This is right. So what happens many times is that people take drivers off shelf 15 inch, they look, by the way, all of them look the same. Put them on a board, turn on the music. They might be excited because music is playing, but with time they will feel that something is not really working right. So the woofers, even though they look the same, they are very different in parameters. And if you want to have good results from open muffle, you have to have your drivers working properly in this configuration. One of the historic mistakes uh, I don't know if it's a mistake or an accident, is that some people who wrote articles that are very popular, by the way, about cancellations, about, 
you know, what works right and what works wrong with open buffer, they wrote this article based on taking existing woofers off shelf, putting them on the board and, you know, measuring them and explaining what they, the results that they received. But in our case, the woofers were designed specifically for these configurations. And it took time. It takes few rounds of changes of parameters, of positions, of, of you know, parts in the woofer. Once the woofers and, and the other components are, they match well open buffle, then you don't need to worry too much about crossover and other elements. They, they play right. So not every black 15 inch woofer that you'll take off shelf and put on a board will give you the best results. It will play music and you might get excited, but to have it right, you have to put some efforts into the design of the drivers. So, you know, we can go into parameters, QTS and other material issues that are many times overlooked. But um, I would like to tell you a story about food and to relate it to speakers. Now, what you have in Open Buffalo, basically, you have two, two drivers here and a crossover. And it sounds as it sounds. Now, years ago, I was with my family in Italy and we rented a villa, few families, and we had a woman cooking for us every every evening. And she made a pasta bolognese with bolognese sauce. That was magical. I mean, the sauce was so good. After a few days, I asked her, how, how do you do this sauce? Can you show me what you do that it tastes so good? So after translation and everything, she calls me to the kitchen. She takes a tomato. She cuts a slice of a tomato and she hands it to me. I put the tomato in my mouth and that's it. You understand why the sauce is good? Because the tomato tastes amazing. Now, the same thing happens here. If the drivers are rightly designed for open buffalo and for the specific geometry and the configuration, they will sound good. And if they don't sound good, you'll need a lot of spices, crossover components and tweaking and, and adjusting in order to bring them to where you want. So this is the story, you know, it's so, it can be very simple and it can, and it can be very tricky. Well, what is a good sound is a good question. First of all, the, this issue is totally subjective. Every person would prefer a different sound. One might uh, like more analytical sound, one might like more relaxed, laid back sound. As a designer, you have to decide where you want to be, what sound you want to have with your speakers. And in our case, we go for organic musical sound. Now, what does it mean organic? Basically, most of us are moving between, as audio fans, we are moving between two, two physical states. One is when we are sitting, when we sit down and we listen to the sound, we want to compare, we want to hear how this system sounds like, how this record sounds like. The second state is when we sit down and we just put music and we want to enjoy music. Now, these are two different physical and, you know, even kind of mental scenarios. In the first one, when we are concentrating on sound, we are attracted by single elements. We hear excellent high frequencies and we are excited. In the second scenario, we are excited by emotional response. If music talks to us and we are enjoying, we, we feel, we feel emotionally moved. If I'm asked what is an organic sound, I would say this is a very thin line between having a good sound of the complete musical presentation, meaning the music sounds great, but none of the single elements distract you from the complete. Meaning if I'm listening to music as music and suddenly I have amazing high frequencies and I, and I relate to them, my brain is now listening to the sound of the cymbals of the drummer and he moves a bit from the complete. So this fine line between the complete and the single elements that none of the single elements stands out more than it should be in order for the music to sound complete and organic. You know, first, thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to touch few issues that are, might be sensitive or might be touchy, like what is organic and how, you know, speakers are built, but all in all, these shows are the space where we meet 
potential customers where customers can hear our speakers. We sell direct only. We don't have dealers, we don't have showrooms. So I want to thank Expon. I want to thank you also for giving us the opportunity to, to present ourselves and uh, see us at the next shows.